And so one of the most important things that we can do as Christians is to remember where we came from because it's our roadmap for how much grace has been outworked in our lives. I once was there, but now I'm here. I once was blind, but now I see. I once was this kind of person, and now I'm here. But what that check does is, one, align us with how great grace is in our world, but the other check it does is it tells us that that person over there is here. But grace is different from law. See, if I see through the lens of law, that person is there, and they are still there. Look how terrible it is. Look how awful it is. Look how messed up it is. Oh, what, what a terrible thing. I should separate myself from it. It smells. Um, law. Grace. Takes the dirt and can see the man. Grace takes the rock that is formless and can see the magnificent carving. See, grace does not have its end focus here. Law does. Grace has its end focus on what God can do with the little I have. In the same way, the parable of the talents. The faithful servants were the ones that could see what good God could do with what they had. And so, sometimes we look at what we have and we think it's not good enough. Now, my husband's not good enough. My wife's not good enough. She's lovely. My kids aren't good enough. My culture's not good enough. We were talking about that the other day. Boy, I'm struggling. My church isn't good enough, you know. The music's not good enough. The preach is terrible. Sorry. Somebody else next week, you'll be all right. The coffee's not good enough. The seat's terrible. I've been sitting here too long. The bottom's not good enough, or the seat isn't good enough. It's one or the other. Maybe it's a bit of both. Grace doesn't see that. Grace seems what it can become. See, the eyes of grace look at you and they don't see sinner, they see saint. Yeah? The eyes of grace look at a teenager that's messing up and they don't see a teenager that's messing up, they see a teenager that's messing up that can be the next, the next, the next. And we are called as Christians, and I'll, kind of, I'll probably end it here. Yeah, I'll, I'll kind of end it here. We are called as Christians to invest grace to delegate grace, to serve others with grace, and to multiply grace where we are. So our calling as Christians, as a Christian community, the saints in Chelmsford, is to give grace, to invest grace, delegate grace, serve grace, and multiply grace where we are. Which means no more talking about how good the coffee is and start focusing on how good the coffee can be. No more talking about how bad the chairs are and start focusing on how good the chairs can be. No more talking about how bad so-and-so is or that life group and everything else is and start praying and start doing as to how good it can be. No more talking about how I'm better off on my own and start realizing that God placed you in a community and you better flip and get on with it because it's not about you doing it on your own because I'm afraid you don't get church body that way you're not in the body of Christ on your own you're in the body of Christ whether you like it or not and it's about ministering grace to others not demanding grace from others because we don't demand from others we give because that's what grace does we are filled with grace in Jesus Christ grace is the capacity to do what you couldn't do because it's God's supply not yours grace is the capacity to have patience where you couldn't have patience because it's God's supply not yours so when you say to God God give me more patience he sends grace in abundance because grace abounds where sin abounds but grace abounds all the more so grace sends you the patience but what you have to do is realize that it's coming from him not you and you stop looking internally for patience and start looking to Christ remembering where you were remembering you where you have got to and start giving grace away like it's sweeties yeah, we give grace and we become a community that ministers grace. And out of that, you have a community that has peace because grace precedes peace. Without grace, you don't get the peace, so you have to start with the grace. And so here we have this wonderful dynamic. So what binds us is grace. What keeps us is grace. What we have is grace. What we need is grace. We serve a God of grace and we serve one another with grace, out of grace that we have been given and when we realize this, we take that which was dirty, we take that which was formless, we take that which was dirt, we take that which as we could see was not good enough, and we actually begin the process of taking a Timothy and turning them into a Paul, 
taking the dirt and turning it into a man, taking the child and helping them to grow up to be one that makes their dreams. And so we must become a community of grace and peace, the saints in Chelmsford. We must realize that we're not saints because of our own merits. We're not saints because of the wonderful things we have done or even our history. Our history doesn't make us saints. Who, um, who we were as Elam or who we are as Elam doesn't make us saints. How we do church doesn't make us saints. None of that is holy. Christ is holy. And your process of becoming a bond servant of Christ is a process of being a minister of grace because you are given, according to God, the talents and the supply of grace that you need to fulfill the work that he has called you to. And you are to go and minister grace, not law, to people around you. Sometimes it means drawing the lines and exposing things for what they are, but it also means being redemptive in the process. You don't abandon something at the mercy of law, but you minister grace because of what Jesus Christ has done for you. So... The benediction that Paul announces at the beginning of all his letters is a parallel to the high priestly benediction that they used to give. And it's in Numbers. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace now and forever. Amen. And he calls us to do the same to others. May you bless them and keep them. May you turn your face towards them and be gracious to one another. May you turn your pleasure and your smile and your countenance and your attention upon them and give away peace now and forever. Amen. Bless you guys and thank you for listening.